the ninth president of Uganda. Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. Born in 1944. A Ugandan politician who has been president since 1986. His family migrated to Tungamu, Uganda Protectorate. He went to Kiamale Elementary School, Barara High School, and Ntare School. He graduated from Dar es Salaam University. He studied economics and political science. He became a Marxist. He loved radical Pan-African politics. It is believed that he also led a group of students from Dar es Salaam University to uh, Frelimo territory in Mozambique. The men like radical ideas. He gained some knowledge from leftist Walter Rodney. He loved the ideology and idea of Franz Fanon on revolutionary violence to post-colonial Africa. But when he, come, when he came to power, the Western world thought that he was one of the new generation of African leaders. who could promote the rule of law and democracy, a Marxist who turned capitalist, but still using his Marxist ideology to rule and to command domestic consumption. Those at home, he rules with the iron fist, is a Marxist, who love his gun, wherever he's going, you find him carrying that gun with him. Even in a disaster area, he will carry his AK-47. He will put on his uniform. And when I say that the man like the radical idea of a radical Pan-African, it is serious. He is a revolutionary who believes in post-colonial violence. Violence, he uses violence on anybody who wanted to interrupt his rule. And this is what the European Union and the other countries thought that, oh, we have already found a new generation of leaders, new generation of African leaders. I'm sorry, but that was a dream that never came true. Because he is a Marxist that turned capitalist and is a Marxist that turned capitalist and then turned dictator. 
we all thought the man would not turn into a dictator, but he does. Uganda had been peddling through corruption since he walked into power, since he walked into office. Unemployment, poverty is biting most of Ugandans very hard today. We all know that the president had been honest to himself. He's really honest. When he told the world, he told you Ugandans, that he's not working for you. We have to respect him for that honesty. He told you, I am not working for you. I am working for myself, for my family, and for my grandchildren. That should have gone very clear into your mind as Ugandans. But simply because Ugandans are so stupid, they don't listen, they don't see what is happening. When they eat for one day, they think that is enough. So fellow countrymen, you don't have to shed crocodile tears. Because, because what you see is what you get. The president is very honest with you. You can hate him, you can blame him, but he's very honest. You work for yourself, you work for your family, you work for your grandchildren. That's exactly what he's doing. We all know that with radical Pan-African ideas, He had been involved in various war in Congo, in northern Uganda, in Somalia, and he managed to create a brilliant genocide in actually land. He did. Why? Because we are blind. We don't see what is happening. We don't see what is coming. We are always satisfied if you give us food for a day. But just eating for a day you cannot develop that country called Uganda. You cannot solve the poverty that is biting all Ugandans. Cannot improve the schools or hospital simply because we have that idea that if I eat for a day, I will be fine. And you go and eat for a day. And then after a day, you have nothing more. That is the life. We all know he is very good in suppressing his political opponent. He left fun on ideology and ideas of revolutionary violence to post-colonial Africa. He loved it, and he's going to use it until his last breath. When Idi Amin was overthrown, 
by Tanzanian Defense Forces together with Uganda National Liberation Front, Kikosi Malu, and they returned to Uganda. He decided to form the Popular Revolutionary Army, PLA. He planned a rebellion against Apollo Milton Oboti. The insurgency began with blowing up buses full of women and children on Kampala Gulu Road, attacked on army barracks, army installation in central Mubende district. The PRA merged with former President Yusuf Lule, fighting group, the Uganda Freedom Fighters, to create National Resistance Army, NRA. With his political wing, the National Resistance Movement. And NRM. Two other rebel groups, the Uganda National Rescue Front and the former Uganda National Army FUNA, they both engaged the government of Obote. They did when they started the revolution. Funa was formed in West Nile sub-region from the remnants of Idi Amin supporters. They developed 10 points covering democracy, security, consolidation of national power, improvement in social services and elimination of corruption and <laughs> misuse of power. The 10 points, I don't think they did uh, uh, achieve it at all. Because, let me go back to when we came back from Tanzania. You were in Museveni. Was. Minister of Defense. The President at that moment misused his position as the Minister and he abused his own power. He abused the power of that office. He abused the power of that office. When the liberation war was over, he became the Minister of Defense. And from NASA became his private army. He recruited a large number of Tutsi and Banyankole to bolster its rank. The group was about nine to 10,000 fighters. As the result of that recruitment, many Tutsis 
who were refugees from Rwanda were recruited into Uganda National Army. That is a crime that had never been solved. The United Nations High Commission for Refugees in Uganda at that moment has a lot of questions to answer. The commander of the Tanzanian Defense Force that was based in Jinja to oversee the liberation of Uganda have also a lot of questions to answer. Why did the Minister of Defense recruit foreigners into Uganda National Army? And on top of that, they were recruiting refugees who were under the supervision of United Nations High Commission Commissioner for Refugees in Uganda. If this gentleman knew about the minister of defense misusing, abusing his power in recruiting those fighters and the fighters who were trained using Uganda taxpayers' money. They had been educated using Uganda taxpayers' money. And the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees did not know what was happening, that foreigners were being recruited, that foreigners were being harmed, that foreigners were sent to Dar es Salaam for training. I hope the commander who was based in Jinja from Tanzania Defense Forces did not tell Nyerere the truth about what happened in Uganda under his nose that should have been investigated. As the result of recruiting those Tutsi refugee from Rwanda, he, as the Minister of Defense at that time, He aligned Fronanza with the Rwandese Alliance for National Unity, an organization that wanted to create an army of Tutsi exile to overthrow the government of Rwanda. And they did. And it has succeeded beginning with the Minister of Defense, abusing his office, using his power to recruit refugees, to help him fight his war. And then later, he goes and overthrow a neighboring country. They did overthrow the government of Rwanda. We have now a president who misuses his position as the Minister of Defense, recruiting Tutsi refugees into Uganda army in order to take power, using Uganda taxpayers' money to pay for this sort of misuse of power. I keep asking myself,
we have. Member Parliaments in Uganda. If I could ask such a question, I wonder why it's taking long for those Member of Parliament to begin asking questions. about assassination of Uganda since independence. Those questions are not being asked. Nobody wants to ask a question whether we are okay. We are not okay. You see, the National Register Movement, when they went for this pistol with Tito Kero, they were just buying time. They were buying time. They were buying time. We all know. That at that time, that our commanders in Western Uganda had reached secret agreement with NRA to end of the entire barracks, the entire barracks to NRA because those commanders were promised money and protection. Those commanders betrayed the two generals who really wanted to bring peace who really wanted to bring lasting peace in Uganda. And we all know some of those commanders were eliminated as they drive towards Gulu in northern Uganda. When they reached Karuma, they were eliminated. They never live to witness how the people they supported put the entire generation, the entire Chile people into a concentration camp. They organized a brilliant genocide that is going to disturb the people of Acholi for a very long time. It is a pity that they died before seeing what they brought upon our people. We all know that some of our religious leaders, they like playing those games, whether they are now working for God, sending soul to heaven, or working for our Lord and getting people killed. We know that some people are enjoying today. Some people have been given a farm. 
Some people have been given cash, including religious leaders, cultural leaders, those soldiers who help surrender. Let's hope that wherever you are, you enjoy what you did to your own people. Thank you for listening. I will be back. <laughs>